The AI boom, among other things, has been a great educational moment for ETF investors. We'll talk about that and do some trading. I got Tom White in studio and we got Dave Maza on the line. He's the Chief Strategy Officer at Round Hill Investments. I talk about ETF education, Dave, because there were a lot of funds with AI or robot in the name that got spanked the last uh, two weeks by NVIDIA or just the NASDAQ alone, but you, your guys' new ETF did not. Uh, I gave you guys credit, and uh, I guess I didn't even realize it was you until uh, I was looking at the uh, issuance from Round Hill. So uh, nice job. Congrats. Yeah, thank you again. We're excited about the launch of the chat ETF, which is the first ETF focused just on companies exposed to generative AI. And to your point, there's been a ton of focus and a ton of buzz about AI helping, I think, lift actually overall equity markets. But more importantly, the transformation that we're seeing and what companies are talking about, and it's not just NVIDIA here, is on the generative AI side, right? The application to the consumer, to the enterprise are all here. Uh, and, and we're just kind of scratching the surface of what we can do, NVIDIA being the picks and shovels, but all the companies that, are, that you're going to find in the chat ETF are exposed to generative AI, and we believe are the right companies to help uh, when looking to identify something that is as nascent as generative AI. So yeah, as nascent as uh, uh, generative AI, how much then uh, will this index it's based on be able to change? Uh, I mean, NVIDIA, Microsoft being a huge chunk of this alphabet. Right now, that concentration has been a very good thing as you are probably the uh, most representative of the AI funds I can see for this moment. Uh, you know, what happens if it's a flash in the pan? I mean, do you worry about having to diversify or is the point of this to be able to just have that very focused generative AI exposure? Well, I think first and foremost, the idea is to uh, be as exposed to generative AI as we can. But what's interesting about this ETF is it's actually not just following an in index. It's actively managed, managed by Roundhill's Investment Committee. And we're, we're, the process is looking to identify companies exposed to generative AI mm. in two ways. One of which are companies talking about it. You find focuses in publicly available transcripts and other sources. So. Is there a talking the talk? But more importantly, are they walking the walk? And there, we look at their exposure to things like research and development revenue and try to weed through the potential for companies to just say they're exposed to AI and actually not have anything to do with it. Um, and I think that's actually gonna be important here. So the idea is that the fund is gonna be provide that concentrated exposure to generative AI, but be able to adapt over time because it is such a dynamic space. And we're hearing company CEOs say that if they don't have a plan for generative AI going forward, they're gonna be left behind. And many view this as transformational uh, as something like the internet, uh, the adoption of the iPhone, and that this is not necessarily just a flash in the pan. Of course, time will tell, but there's a lot of interesting signs here that generative AI is not necessarily just that new theme that's being emerging, but actually has long-term staying power. Got it. Uh, so right now, those big three, obviously a big portion. How many holdings are in it total? There's around 30 stocks in the portfolio today. Okay, 30 stocks, and you're going to be able to monitor because this is a, a pretty active fund. Yeah, I wouldn't expect the holdings to be changing on a daily basis, uh, but over. But yes, at the margins, there could be modifications. I think you, you point out a, a, a great uh, point here is that Companies like NVIDIA, your Microsoft, Adobe, your AMD, I think they're all being well known that they're at the forefront of AI, it's the tip of the spear, especially NVIDIA. Uh, again, providing, as I said before, those picks and shovels. But there are more and more companies that may be smaller that could be exposed to it, whether it's uh, an iFly Tech or a Sense Time, which are not based in the US, or other companies that, again, may not be household names yet, that are either customers of something like NVIDIA or suppliers, and those are the names that, that we're going to find. So I'm thinking about Nvidia sort of as that as uh, the emblematic of this space, but also we need to think they are providing the semiconductors, but really we're focused also on the uses of those, uh, and also what's going into those uh, really high-powered chips that companies like Nvidia are making. Got it. What are the flows looking like right now? Are, are people banging down the door to get in, or what? You better believe. So we launched uh, this ETF really only a few uh, a few weeks ago, and it's, uh, it's seen an incredible amount of inflows, uh, incredible amount of volume, really picked up last week. 
of course helped by the attention that NVIDIA brought to the space. But as, as more investors, I think, are beginning to see through all the negative headlines out there. And if you open up the newspaper or look at the front page, uh, really, of any paper, uh, it, it's going to be depressing, right? De debt ceiling debacle, questions about uh, the economy, inflation. And, I am, and I'm not saying they're not out there. But there's still some opportunities for investors to look um, uh, at in the equity markets. And I think generative AI is one of them. And we don't necessarily just need to hide, hide out in cash all the time. Got it. Hey, uh, if we love AI so much, why not let Chad GPT run the fund? Well, we've heard a lot about that. And there's some questions. Uh, I think time will tell if AI as an investment uh, has, has the firepower and certainly uh, we leverage ChatGPT uh, in our day-to-day our -day business practices. It's actually helped us be more efficient as a company, be more efficient to identify some of the companies. But for now, we think the human element remains important as an oversight function. Uh, we don't think you're uh, taking over the world and as a threat. It's really, I think, an opportunity to help us be more efficient, both, as, both uh, in our day-to-day -day lives, but also in our business life. Okay. All right. Local fund manager believes in use of AI, but not for his job. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're all on the same boat. Thanks, Dave. And uh, good timing for the launch. Wow. Uh, uh, pretty good stuff. And it certainly has done its job uh, as good, if not better, than anything else that I know of in the ETF world the last couple of weeks. Dave Mazza, Chief of Strategy Officer at Round Hill Investments. All right, Tom. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's talk some trades here. Oof, uh, NASDAQ fading a little bit. Yeah. Uh, NVIDIA, Apple, what are the options looking like? All right, so the one option is uh, you go, you just buy a, a basket that's focused in on this stuff, yeah. which is what Dave's offering here. Mm -hmm. Again, it's done a good job. Right. The other one is uh, maybe you uh, have been in NVIDIA mm -hmm. and uh, you know you own the stock or Microsoft, you want to hedge or, well, I mean, what do you think? What, what's the approach here if, you, if you're an options trader? <laughs> Well, I, I think if you look at the parabolic move that NVIDIA's had, even though after earnings the valuation actually went down uh, because of the guidance that they gave, that's, you know, that's a, probably the only bright spot out of, uh, out of this report where, okay, maybe it is justified the, the move that we're seeing uh, in the stock now up, you know, what, nearly 180% so far this year. The RS, RSI on it, relative strength indicator, overbought. Uh, of course, because of this move. Um, so how do you handle this, you know, trading options on it? Well, you want to, uh, you know, give yourself cushions uh, either to the upside. If you already own the stock, you know, selling call verticals above the current share price might not be a bad idea. But I looked at something, if you still want to get into a name like this, make sure you're staying risk to find. It's still, it's a high price stock, right? A trillion dollar company right now with the stock trading at these levels. Uh, so I looked at just selling a one month uh, in duration short put vertical that's neutral to bullish in, uh, in nature where you can still profit if the stock stays up at these levels you can still profit if it continues to move higher even if it moves lower uh, you still got that cushion to the downside selling uh, the June 30th weeklies uh, that expire in 31 days a 380 strike put then against it to say risk defined by the 370 strike put collecting a credit of roughly about three bucks uh, that takes your break even down to uh, 377 to the downside. That's about seven and a half, eight percent below the current share price in there. So you're still giving your, yourself a better probability of success, giving yourself that cushion to the downside. We're still uh, having that uh, basically bullish stance on this name. Okay. All right. So uh, taking a little bit of a hedged approach, yeah. uh, but uh, still net bullish. Yeah. For uh, Apple, uh, which kind of gets away from this, uh, yeah. I'm curious what you think there. The further you move away from the core of AI, the less bullish these stocks have been, yeah. but they're still firm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, what about kind of a more core stock like Apple to the S&P 500? Well, yeah, it, it's not in his fund. This stock is yeah. in the, the chat right. uh, ETF. So, but if you take a look at maybe some catalysts that are coming. Worldwide Developers Conference starts next Monday. Maybe a product launch there in their uh, their headset that uh, they might come out with. That might be a catalyst to the upside. You got to remember the stock's also hitting 52-week highs, and it's really uh, you know not in this AI theme that uh, we've seen uh, drive the Nasdaq higher. So this stock's do, still doing well, still up about 37, 38 percent this year. So I looked at it the same way giving myself a cushion, but if I want to own the shares, this might be the strategy that works for you. And if it doesn't go lower, I just get to keep the option premium that I sold the put for. So looked at a cash secured put in here. 
Um, it's a little bit more capital intensive, intensive in case you have to buy the shares. Just going out to that same June 30th weekly series, 31 days till expiration, selling the 175 strike put, which is out of the money, uh, just a couple bucks, about two and a half dollars out of the money here to the downside. You're collecting a credit of about three dollars, so that takes your break even down to 172 over the next month. That's about three and a half percent below the current share price. So you're still giving yourself that cushion, but the difference between this and the put vertical we sold in NVIDIA, because it's a high price stock, is that this might be the type of strategy you would use if you're comfortable owning the shares, but you're buying them at a discount because you see your break even there on the risk profile all the way down at 172. So uh, maybe taking advantage of uh, the move higher, but then also giving yourself uh, that ability to have a cushion to the downside before you start getting hurt on a trade like this. But if you're uh, willing to buy the shares at that lower price point, this kind of strategy works out. Okay, got it. All right, so, uh a little bit of different approaches, but kind of similar in the way right. that they're net positive, right. net bullish, without uh, going berserk right. and uh, you know chasing FOMO rallies. All right, yeah. uh, mostly selling downside or downside yeah. spreads. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks, Tom.